Um, man and his creation for setting the future. From the dawn of man to the rise of the machines. Uh, firstly, uh, let me uh, say a few things about the importance of the conference. We are uh, facing uh, the era of globalization, which can be seen as an opportunity for interconnection between communities or among communities and between people and among people. And a very good opportunity also to set up humanistic values. As far as technology is concerned, uh, I think we can all agree that uh, the technological development over the last decades has been very, very fast, very rapid. And uh, in my opinion, this easiness and this effortless way of living has come up with a price. Now, what the price is, we're going to find out. And we, um, we are finding out constantly. The point is, are our societies capable of keeping up? Us as individuals, as well as our societies as a whole, can we keep up with this very rapid development of technology? Um, in his um, lecture, Mr. Uh, Hadzi Theodoridis mentioned the sci-fi films. Uh, one of the best, possibly the best in my opinion, is uh, 2001 Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. I think it was by 1967 or 68. It is divided in two parts. The first one is entitled The Dawn of Man. Today, 60, 70 years later, we are facing the dawn of digital man. Uh, let's remember that in this film, the ape, the monkey, becomes human thanks to the discovery of a tool which he uses. And nowadays, we seem to be going the other way around. Man returns to ape precisely due to, owing to the innumerable tools in his life. The ethical implication of the film is when the ape starts, starts using the tool as a weapon. It's a, it's a bone from a gazelle. He kills the antagonist and he takes over the area. What is the ethical implication of the development of technology nowadays? Death, as well as any other negative issues, have become, um, uh, especially death because of misuse of technology, has become some sort of normality. People die in car crashes every day, and all you hear is, it happens, what can you do? So, there seems to be a very strong dependence on technology, which, in my opinion, leads to lack of critical thinking and a, an inability to prioritize our problems and our relations uh, towards one another. And uh, eventually towards ourselves. Now, uh, a very funny or silly, if you will, uh, example that I've used quite a few times during my lectures is the ready-made home, uh, ready homemade pesto sauce. Now, um, pesto sauce is a fresh and very delicious uh, sauce made of basil, um, traditional Italian recipe. It is very easy to make, very fresh, very healthy. Instead, we prefer to buy it ready-made from the stores, which is much more expensive, uh, full of uh, preservatives and sugars, not as tasty, just because we are too lazy to make it up, uh, um, to make it ourselves, which shouldn't take more than a minute and a half or maybe two minutes. Obviously, Technology uh, is related, strongly related to economy. Now, uh, for our Greek friends, economy, the etymology of the word, derives from the Greek words egos, house, 
and nemo, which means to, to distribute. So economy is the ideal distribution within the house. We are now facing globally, not just Greece, but globally, uh, continuous reduction of working places, which leads to unemployment, which in turn leads to poverty. And uh, I think it is high time we took a look at the te factor of technology. How does technology, how is technology involved in the reduction of working places and unemployment and eventually poverty? A small parenthesis, uh, Gandhi, while he was ruling India, he, um, he said a big no to the full industrialization of India because what he didn't want to was India to become fully industrialized and thus more jobs to be lost. Uh, another example, uh, self-moving cars like Tesla. We know that a significant percentage of world walking places are related to driving, means of public transport, taxis, uh, lorries. Um, I think we should uh, stop and think for a while what will happen when uh, all cars become self-moving. What about all these jobs that will be lost, all these jobs that are related to driving, like the ones I, um, I just mentioned? We are also facing two uh, main problems, mm. two significant problems, but perhaps not as much as they tell us. Overpopulation and climate crisis. I don't deny that there are problems indeed. I'm just denying the extent of these problems. I think that uh, there is a bit of exaggeration that hides the actual problems, which is our lack of knowledge, as well as our inability to work with technology, to cope with technology. And of course, the focus that is um, put on climate crisis and overpopulation by uh, the mass media is also something to be taken into account. Um, let me remind you that a couple of days ago, the world population reached uh, 8 billion and now possibly it's gone up. Now let's uh, let's break it down. Overpopulation. In my opinion, what we see as overpopulation is just the unequal distribution of wealth and uh, and goods. Country, uh, regions like Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, Latin America. I forgot to put it here, and part of the Balkans. If we can um, think of how much a waste the wealthy West has in terms of rubbish and food waste and water consumption, we can see that in reality, Earth can sustain all of 8 billion. It's just that some regions are very poor, like the ones I mentioned, Africa, Southeast Asia, part of the Balkans and uh, Latin America, because the wealthy part of the world, the Western part, uh, Western Europe, uh, in Central Europe, America, Canada, they just waste too much, too much food, too much water, too many rubbish. An example, how come Africa is so poor when its land is so rich and fertile? Africa has got everything. There's natural gas, there's gold, there's diamonds, silver, bronze, uh, precious and semi-precious stones, petrol, uh, oil that is. Uh, this is owing to colonization. As a matter of fact, I cannot think of any wealthy nation of Europe that hasn't colonized Africa. And moving on to the second big thing of the 21st century, uh, climate crisis. Is there really a climate crisis, I'm asking, now, climate change is something unquestionable. It is a fact that we cannot question. It occurs anyway and has always occurred and always will. We know of ice age, we know of dry age, 
this is the national cycle of life. When we talk about climate crisis, what we are, what we are really talking about is a differentiation in our measurements, which, are, which go back say 100, 120, maybe 150 years. We don't know what really happened in the climate before that, because that, there aren't any uh, data. From mythology though, we know that several myths confirm the natural phenomenon. The flood is a common myth that you can find everywhere. The Greeks with uh, the Fkalian and Pira, the Indians, uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, um, myths of the Aztecs and the Mayas and the Incas, myths about the sun, myths about famine because of dry weather. And I'm asking, is this climate crisis part of this new fashion, the uh, political correctness movement? This is, uh, obviously is open to debate. And it all comes down to education. I'm afraid to say, I hate to say, but I must, that the educational system, possibly worldwide, but definitely in Greece, and to a very large extent in China, mm -hmm. that I can uh, speak of, is often a barrier to the development of man, whereas it should be uh, the other way around. The edu education should be uh, a path towards the spiritual development, whereas uh, it very often is an obstacle. What does the school teach, uh, teach us? Faith. Faith is an established religion. In, uh, in case of Greece, it is Orthodox Christianity. Faith in the representative system. Faith in the superiority of the nation. It might not be the case every time, it might not be the norm, but we cannot deny that it does happen. Through education, man can reach, I mean, through proper education, man can reach what Cornelius Castoriadis uh, referred to as the imaginary construction of society. For our Greek friends, the fantasiaki thesmisi tis kinonias. Lastly, uh, as far as education is concerned, uh, in my opinion, the very core of education is the questioning, is the value of questioning. Through questioning our norms and our institutions, uh, the society goes forth. This is the ability to balance things, if we refer to Mencius. Mengzi, a Chinese philosopher, the more elegant version of Confucianism around the time of Aristotle. Um, uh, let us um, hop there and think of how is it that institutions, uh, established institutions have been, have been questioned during the past. Imagine what if uh, people hadn't questioned institutions like the Inquisition or slavery. Very recently, now we're going to talk about the state, very, very recently uh, in Greece and globally, we saw very strict anti-COVID measures. In China, by the way, we still do, uh, with violence, with crackdowns. Um, a quick reminder, in all Greek mythology, there were two bodyguards of Zeus, two, um, deities that would also uh, always accompany Zeus. Um, this was Kratos and Via. Kratos means state in modern Greek, but in traditional Greek, it means power, whereas Via means violence. It is that sort of empowerment that we see in the state nowadays. A question. What would Nikos Poulantzas have to say today about the role of the state? In my, in my opinion, there's a strong possibility he would, he would have turned down his uh, beliefs, his, um, his opinions shaped in the 70s in uh, 
in Paris. Uh, obviously, we will never learn. And also, uh, let us refer to uh, a very um, important modern Greek philosopher, Dimitris Liadinis, a professor of philosophy. 25 centuries after Heraclitus, and we still haven't managed to prove him wrong. So which is the ideal state? We cannot know. And if we do, we don't seem to be doing anything to establish it. Lastly, uh, let me talk about uh, this latest fashion of political correctness. Uh, I think more and more people seem to be having enough with it. Movements such as Black Lives Matter, uh, the edification of uh, Yanis and Takumbo, undoubtedly a very good player. The use of the term colored instead of black, the destigmatization of fat of the word fat, the Me Too movement and the gender matters. Recently, there was a discussion about the change in the grammatical rules in order to fit the gender equality. We're obviously talking about the um, languages that have genders, like uh, Greek, for example. Uh, also, very recently, uh, we have changed the word for adoption, the Greek for, uh, word adoption for our Greek friends uh, from Eothesia to Pedothesia. Uh, all of these are different aspects of racism. You cannot change um, racism by putting things the other way around, upside down, because anti, forgive me for doing this, anti racism is still racism. In my opinion, to a very large extent, not exclusively, but to a very large extent, it is a means of political control. Example, Donald Trump, Boris Johnson and Bolsonaro, the, president, the former president of Brazil, to an extent, they have been scapegoats of the system. Now, if I were in America or England or Brazil, I wouldn't have voted for these guys. And um, this is for sure. However, it seems that they have been the scapegoats of the system. Trump has been uh, had been giving out uh, interviews, say uh, claiming that he would uh, build the, um, a wall between USA and Mexico, uh, a, a wall that was never built. On the other hand, no one talks about the crimes of the so-called good presidents, like. Bill Clinton, the Democrat president. Um, if we, most of us would remember what happened in uh, with the NATO bombs in Serbia and and what well, former Yugoslavia and then Serbia during Clinton's uh, reign in mid nineties. So it all comes down to this. Uh, in my opinion, what we ought to do and I believe that this conference has given us the opportunity to do it, is to redefine our relation, our relationship to technology. And through this redefinition, we might as well reach to a redefinition of our relationship to the others and eventually to ourselves. Um, I leave this open to debate and um, I hope that there will be um, uh, a rich uh, discussion at the end. Uh, so thank you very much. This uh, this will be all. If we have any questions now, anything that you would like to comment, uh, please be my guest. Otherwise, we might as well talk about it uh, during the Q and A session. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much.